I'm gonna give you a couple extra days. But it's gonna cost you another two G's as a reminder not to fuck it up. And don't get me to like you. I'm not the one with the short bag. This camera I recently bought. Bought this on eBay on uh, February 9th, 2022. Keystone A3 16 millimeter movie camera. And I bought it for the specific reason of doing this review because I could not resist. Ah! Shit. It's too cold for your pen to work. Shit. I could not resist the price. US $22.50, $15.90 to ship. It's just too, too great of a bargain to uh, pass up on. So Keystone A3 camera. It's a 16 millimeter wind up crank camera. It takes 100 feet of 16 millimeter double perforated film. We're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. And film is readily available from the Film Photography Project. Double perforated 16 millimeter film made a comeback. And we carry this type of film for these type of cameras in a variety of uh, different ISOs and color, black and white, negative film, reversal film, you name it. Now, what's great about these cameras is that they are wind up. They don't take any batteries. They take what's known as a C-mount lens, and they you can swap out lenses. This particular camera came with, and this is the first, first one I own, it's known as a fixed focus lens, meaning you do not have to do any focusing. The only thing you need to do is set your f-stops. Stops down to f16, and it opens all the way up to f3.5. So that's not too terrific. For example, my Keystone A7 has a whole different type of lens, uh, which stops down to f16. You can open it all the way to f1.5. 1.5, which is very, very important if you're shooting, um, let's say, high-speed film in an indoor situation. So you can look for a different lens if you happen to buy a camera that comes with a what's known as a slow lens. So what do you need to know to get started? Okay, well, here's your lens. This particular lens is fixed focus. Don't need to worry about focusing. Did I mention that, John? About five times. Did I mention that you are behind the camera, John Fidelli? Not once. Okay. Here I am. Most <laughs> most of these cameras come with this handy dandy chart, um, which I always encourage everyone to ignore because the ISO film back in the day. By the way, this camera was manufactured in or around the mid to late 1930s. So the ISO of film that was available in the 1930s was very different than today. So, you know, please d don't pay attention to this. It'll steer you wrong and it'll give you improperly exposed film. If you're going to make the investment in the camera and in the film and the developing and the scanning, use a light meter or light meter app. In the description down below is a link to a video that shows you how to use a light meter to properly expose your film. That's, you would look through this eyepiece to, um, you know, frame up your shot. Uh, note that the eyepiece, here it is, here to tear, does not look through your lens. So you're not actually looking through the lens. It's not what's known as a reflex camera. Here is uh, your shutter button. This camera operates by winding it. It's called a crank. Call those Mickey Mouse ears? Uh, you could call these Mickey Mouse ears if you want. Okay. On the side of your camera is also the speed control. Normal speed for this type of camera is 16 frames per second, and that is what I recommend that you shoot at. There are other speeds, but mm, don't sweat it. Tripod mount, in case you want to use a tripod. Let's talk about loading this camera. This is your take-up take up reel <laughs> so this this lever simply sits on your film as it's being wound and as your film winds to the take up roll it goes like that so this that lever is just connected to this whoa 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 modern film that you buy is i don't know if you can see this can you see it's single perf mm -hmm. single perf film no good so <laughs> 
You cannot use single per film in this camera. And that's a very important thing to know. As you can see, there are two sets of teeth. Can, can you see? Mm. Two sets of teeth. Teeth. That's because this camera is only for double perforated film. Here's, here is, can you see that? Here is double perforated film. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, you know, I'm just going to put single per film. F it. I'm just going to put single per film through this camera. What could happen? Well, I've seen what happens because folks have sent in film that they shot that they, they jam through their double perf camera. And it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money because you will not, this will not go through the camera properly. So you need double perforated 16 millimeter film. It's readily available at the Film Photography Project. It will come on what's known as a daylight spool. That means you could load your camera in dim light. And there are two sides to your film. There's the base side, which is this black side. And then there's what's known as the emulsion side, which is usually the lighter, co lighter colored dull side. It's important that the photosensitive side, the emulsion, faces out towards the lens because the light will be coming through your lens, hitting this side of the film and exposing your film. There are these two little doors and that's, you open those up very gently, no violence. If your keystone stops running or doesn't have enough torque, as you can see, all the horsepower is being driven right here. Look at that go, huh? I put one drop of light sewing machine oil on that gear. Because if your camera is not in good shape or it's struggling to pull the film through, maybe it may need one drop of oil. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is take our film in dim light and put it on, properly seat it in the, the camera. There is a film path here. You see this arrow? Feed it through the two sets of teeth. And you can feel it catch. You'll feel it catch. Now there it goes. Okay, you'll feel it close the one door. Uh, it's very important when you do this to have, like take a deep breath and have patience. Now we want to flip this like this. Remember, emulsion side, dull side, facing the outer lens. This is the film gate. So this is the path your film travels when it is exposed. So we want to seat the film behind the film gate. And you'll feel it. Oh, there it is, clicking in. Yep, oh, I felt it click. Now, our door opened here, no good. Oh, make reseat the door. Okay. And here you see what's known as a loop. And this is the little loop of film that the film must have in order to properly travel through the camera. So this side's kind of done. So let's do the same thing for the other side. Let's do this. Okay. That looks, that looks about right. Nice. Your camera came with a take-up spool. It only fits one way. <laughs> Square. Squared. The, <laughs> the round isn't going to go on the square peg. There we go. On your take-up spool. And in order to get the square on the square peg, you need to uh, adjust your the film counter. Remember the old film counter? There it is. It has to be back. Don't get upset. Oh! Fantastic. Now, this may have seen like a major pain in the butt, but once you do this one or two times, it's a piece of cake. It's a simple film path. As you can see, the film is moving properly through the gate. Look at that. And now you will take your lid, you will entomb your film, close.
Oh, look at that. <laughs> so when you're done shooting your, your roll, you take it out of the camera, put it back in its tin. Most film comes in a, either in a tin or a box. And send it off to your favorite lab, hopefully the Film Photography Project. We offer film, both film developing and scanning for double perforated and single perforated 16 millimeter film. And that's really it. Uh, these are just really inexpensive ways to start shooting 16 millimeter film. And if you have already shot, let's say, Super 8 film or regular 8 millimeter film, once you take the step up, even with an old model like this, you will immediately notice how crisp, how amazingly sharp your movie photography looks using 16 millimeter. It's a great, great format. It's my favorite format for home use, even for, um, you know, whatever you may want to shoot, a uh, fashion promo, uh, a, a a commercial spot, something for your YouTube channel, something for your Instagram account. This is an awesome way to go. And did I mention, I should mention, if in case I didn't mention, uh, never open up uh, your film compartment uh, while you're shooting to kind of gaze, to longingly gaze or look at your film. Everyone's done it. I've done it. I've done it. Lots of people do it. Don't. Because uh, film is light sensitive and by doing such, you will expose your film and, you know, you could ruin part of your role. So that's really it. You can leave comments down below or drop us an email, podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. And we will see you very soon. Mm -hmm.